this is Catherine from Accelerated Reader, reading books for you. Today, I will be reading Chapter 69 from Two Worlds, a novel of friends and foes from strange places by Laura T. Lee. Before I begin reading, I would like to give a big thanks to the author for sending me this book to read on my channel. In the description below, I've included links where you may find and purchase this book. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Chapter 69. The next morning, Teresa made one final appearance. Lily bid her friends farewell and stood next to her bed as Teresa surrounded the elves in wispy magic. Right before they were completely obscured, the sorceress turned to Lily. Her face wore the gentle, if less mischievous, smile she gave Lily when they first met. Lilith Clare, you are the most special person I've ever met. I think we can afford to Skype you soon. And remember, I'm watching you. And with a playful wink, the magic completely covered them and they were gone. Lily took hold of her suitcase, the elves' last gift to her. She would have to use the equipment inside sparingly. She immediately set off to work, devising the best plan she could think of. In the end, it wasn't surprising when Lily's mother came back from her work trip five hours later to find her daughter sound asleep on her bed, one arm draped over a brown suitcase. When Lily woke up, sunlight was streaming through the open window. Lily stretched luxuriously and grabbed her suitcase as she heard something. There was a loud trembling sound coming from the direction of the harbor. Careful not to wake her mother, Lily crept out of her room and down the stairs. But as soon as she was outside, she made a beeline to the harbor, a glittering blue-gray expense a quarter mile away. For a second, she looked around unsteadily. Had she forgotten her plan already? Then she remembered what she had to do and pulled her phone out of her pocket to make an important call. Years ago, her older friend had enrolled in the military in the Special Operations Department, which meant she wasn't sent to battles, but to strange disturbances in surrounding cities. Two rings later, someone picked up the phone on the other side. Hello? Anna, it's me. Don't call me Anna. Lily sighed. Hello, Anne. There isn't much difference in that name anyway. That's better. What have you been up to lately, Lily? What have you been up to? Well, I'm in a team heading toward New York Harbor right now. Apparently, there's something weird happening over there. Lily's heart did a hundred jumping jacks, not only because Anna had picked up while on a mission, but because she knew what they were headed toward. You can't go there. Anna's voice sounded slightly exasperated. Why not? Because I'm the only one who knows what's in the harbor. Lily, I don't have time for your jokes. Lily gripped her phone tighter. Anna, I've been in exactly two more battles than you, between two different worlds. I wish I had time to explain, but I'm at the harbor right now with a bunch of dangerous stuff, waiting for what's in the water to come out. Don't stop me. Lily hung up quickly before Anna could ask her if she was going crazy. Now was the time for her to put her plan into action before Anna's team or whatever was in the harbor could stop her. As Lily reached for the zipper of her suitcase, the ground rumbled. Lily froze and looked up in shock as something rose out of the harbor. It took Lily five seconds to take in the scene. By then, half of the harbor had begun to churn. Fear shot through her and she ran, clutching her suitcase, sprinting away from the snarling creatures that crawled out of the water. These were no regular animals. Lily knew that Sophie created them 
and then set them loose to destroy the city. They were reptilian, about six feet tall on their hind legs, long black claws scraping the sand and pulling them out of the harbor. As the first five monsters dragged themselves onto the beach lining the harbor, the army arrived. Anna was the first person to step out of the military-style van closest to Lily. At the sight of the creatures, her mouth dropped open in shock. But then she raised her gun. Don't shoot, Lily cried. She had to get out of the way before they started firing. Anna stared at Lily, not moving. Lily wondered if her friend recognized her. Anne, please, do not fire, Lily ordered slowly. Anna's expression hardened, and raising her weapon, she fired a whole round in her direction. It all happened so quickly. The bullets flew over Lily's shoulder, slamming into the chest of the beast that was about to sink its claws into her. The horrible creature fell backward, gurgling, thrashing violently until its eyes glassed over and it went limp. But already another wave of monsters was crawling out of the water. Anna holstered her gun and drew her laser ray shooter. Lily opened her suitcase and wrenched out her sword. She then dropped the suitcase at Anna's feet, told her to be very careful with its contents, and sprinted into the front line of the beast. The first 10 minutes of battle were filled with howls of pain and the smell of burnt flesh as the special operations team fired their deadly lasers into the creatures. Lily fought with her sword, deflecting stray lasers before they hit her and directing them into the monster's flesh. Wave after wave of lizards, there really was no other way to describe them, crawled out of the water to face the small team of people. First one, then two lizards got past the lasers and stumbled over the cards, the vehicles buckling under their weight Lily knew they would keep coming from the water, from the source that brought them to life. She managed to get to the water line without a single claw scratch. She held her breath and dove underwater, swimming with smooth, precise strokes, as her father had taught her when she was young. The clear water made an easy view of the lizards coming wave after wave out of the water. Her mother said that the harbor was once heavily polluted, but special filters had cleansed the water. Lily swam upward, grabbed a big breath of air and dove again. Her sword reflected the sunlight, acting like a flashlight. But as she swam deeper, the water seemed to become even less murky, like she was going toward a big light. Curious, Lily propelled herself through the water a little further. Two seconds later, she dropped abruptly, crashing into the ground. Oof! It was her voice that surprised her the most, not muffled like it should be underwater, but loud and clear. A second later, Lily realized that she could breathe, despite being at the bottom of the harbor. After a careful examination of her surroundings, she found out that there was a bubble of oxygen surrounding her. She stood on a hill of perfectly dry sand, and in the center of the dome was a tall building from which the lizards emerged. Lily adjusted her grip on her sword and decided it was a good idea to check it out. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for chapter 70. Don't forget to like and subscribe. In the description below, I've included links where you may find and purchase this book.